Hello everyone, this is Brain's Journey, and welcome back to another video in our function series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the third blocking, um, the superid, which is composed of the suggestive and mobilizing functions. Um, I don't really have anything to say at the beginning, so without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing we're going to be looking at is the suggestive function, or the fifth function. Again, these two are switched. This is how you'll see it in the Model A diagrams with the, you know, the blockings. Um, but obviously, the, I want to put the suggestive function before the mobilizing, so the arrows are there to indicate that. Um, the suggestive function, you may also see it called the dual seeking function for reasons that we'll explain way down the line. Um, but what is the suggestive function? What, what does it do? Basically, the suggestive function directly supports the base. It's an area where we are very weak in. It's an area that we have trouble producing you know, activity in ourselves, but once we can get it going, it directly supports the base and its activities um, in our life goals, our core values, what we project to others, etc. Um, we have a difficult time creating stimulation here. We desperately want something to go well here, um, but we, we generally have a hard time making that happen on our own. Um, so one crucial aspect of the suggestive function is that we appreciate others who are able to come into our lives and improve this aspect for us. Others that will give us guidance, um, do things for us, you know, help regulate this aspect, will, will help us, you know, achieve, achieve, you know, goals in our life. Um, whereas we would have a difficult time, we would have to put a lot of effort and a lot of concentration into doing something like that our, on our own time. Um, it is adaptable. It is an adaptable function. Once we do receive stimulation here, which may or may not happen, we can, you know, we can adapt to the situation. It has a lot of benefits, a lot of positive benefits on, on our lives if we are able to engage in this function successfully and positively, um, and we will adapt to whatever comes our way regarding this function because, again, it is a huge, you know, lifeblood for the base function. Um, as well as that, we, it is an area of deep focus. We are constantly trying to comprehend, analyze, take in any kind of information we possibly can about the suggestive function because it is something that we enjoy. Um, and so we make it a priority to learn more about it in order to successfully apply it to our lives and to other people's lives. And then the last thing that I wanted to touch on with the suggestive is that it is generally quite weak. It is something that is, you know, generally in the same class as the polar function in terms of strength, except the difference between this function and the polar function is that the polar is definitely something that we don't want to do. Um, whereas the suggestive function is something that we really, really want to do, but can never seem to produce any kind of manifestations with it. Um, so to sum it up, the suggestive function is more or less this weak area that will really help your life out, but you know, other people will have to come along and provide it for you, lest you have a very difficult time you know, creating that kind of energy for yourself. Um, moving on to the sixth function, the mobilizing, you may also see the mobilizing called the activating function or the hidden agenda. Um, the hidden agenda is kind of a dicey concept and I may touch on it after we finish our Model A series, but for the most part, um, the hidden agenda stuff is, is speculative. But, you know, that being said, the mobilizing is a function that we also enjoy help in, um, but after a certain point it is seen as excessive. Um, we, we, this is not as high of a priority in our lives as the suggestive function. Obviously, if somebody can help us here, you know, we appreciate the help, but if somebody makes it, you know, their goal to, to help our mobilizing, we're generally want to going to direct that toward the suggestive because this is not an end in and of itself. Um, as the base and suggestive are. Um, as well as this, we are more comfortable using it than the suggestive. We're more comfortable, it's not as weak quotes. Um, it's, there's no real differentiation between weak and strong here other than other functional dichotomies that we'll be taking a look at after we finish this main series here. Um, but we do have an easier time using it for the most part. We can bring it out when needed. Um, it might be clumsy, it might not be the best, um, but we are at least able to engage in it to an extent other than the suggestive. Um, so, so we generally are more comfortable with it. As well as that, it has a less mature application. Um, because we're so quick to use this function um, and it's not as strong, it may see, be seen as childish, you know, lacking in vision, careless by other people who are stronger in this function than the, the, the individual. Um, it may see, be seen as puerile. Um, the, the mobilizing is something that we can engage in 
um, but it is often clumsy. We have to work around it, and um, but it's still more used than the suggestive. It just has a less mature, less well-considered application. Um, another thing that I wanted to touch on here is that it is there's a lack of balance with the mobilizing. There's you know we don't receive we don't enjoy receiving too much stimulation here. Um, it's generally something that we kind of prefer to take care of ourselves. Um, so there is a lack of balance because it is weak. It's either generally used recklessly um, or it's completely neglected, completely abandoned um, because we have a hard time striking the balance between off and on between this function. It does get struck, that balance does happen, but those are rare moments. It's either we're using it, overusing it, or, or, or we're not using it at all. And so it's difficult to master, but still something that we tend to, to uh, engage in. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about with mobilizing is that it is seen as a necessary part of good living, but it's not a life goal. I kind of went over that before, um, but to reiterate, it's generally something that you can engage in, and it is generally something that you enjoy doing, um, but it is more seen as just a benefit, a plus, um, and not something that you're actually really striving towards, unlike the suggestive, which helps out the base. Um, so to sum it up, the mobilizing is this function is weak, we can engage it somewhat. It's not seen as a life goal, more as a tool for satisfaction and happiness. Um, and, and we're not always the most mature with it, but we get the job done for the most part. Um, so what does the blocking look like? What does the blocking, the combination of these two functions look like as a whole? So here we have the super id grouping. Obligatory. Like I said in the past two videos, this is not Freud, this is not Jung. This is just a terminology thing. It's not related to those concepts. It's just named after them. With that being said, the super id is sometimes known as the child block for our one, our ability to not properly comprehend information here, and two, our ability to engage in it, you know, clum clumsily and purposelessly. Um, and we don't, you know, we don't always have the best usage of these functions, so it's often seen as, you know, the child. Um, as an archetype. We, we don't actually make a direct comparison there, but another point is that the in individuals have limited awareness here. They're not as aware of their weaknesses unless they're pointed out. Generally something that people will not think about too much, but engage in nonetheless. Um, and so if attention is brought towards the individual regarding these functions, they, they may see it as valuable. Um, but for the most part, they're just kind of passive goals that we strive towards for ourselves that we're not thinking about too much. Um, and as well as that, people give freedom to others here. You know, we were talking about the suggestive, how people will, you know, come into our lives, give us the stimulation that we need to engage in purposefully, the mobilizing, how we can receive help here, you know, it's a weak area. Um, so the super it is, is generally an area where other people will give us help. We don't as much trust our own ability to solve problems here um, because it's weak. It's a weak area. And we don't often, you know, you know, we, we don't have too much freedom here. We give the freedom to the other people to decide how we go about operating these functions. And then the last thing that I wanted to touch on is that these functions readily absorb information. If we can learn something about these functions, then we will because that will benefit our lives. You know, it's a personal satisfaction thing. Is The super it is generally something that we want, something that we want for ourselves, kind of values, but that we have trouble producing and that are not completely externalized. So for us to learn as much as we can will benefit us in various amounts of ways. So, I hope you enjoyed the lecture. We went over the suggestive, the fifth function, the mobilizing, the sixth function, and the, the blocking, the super id. So, if you enjoyed the lecture, make sure to hit the like button, comment if you have any questions, concerns, observations, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're looking forward to more content. Next video will be on the id functions, the ignoring and the demonstrative. Um, so, with that, with that said, I will see you all in the next lecture.